Hello my soccer universe, last league review video before the international break and we're going to the Iberian Peninsula. Now again, I'm, I'm still not quite into either one of these leagues, although I think Liga Portugal is shaping up to become a very interesting one. My problem is that the watch times are not very favorable to me and also not too many opportunities there. And La Liga, yeah, it seems like a case for two for now, but I have not found the real pep in it. I also think there are two little goals scored, although I see already, we see a new crop of teams, newish crop of teams popping up with uh, Villarreal, Betis, you know, teams that we have enjoyed over the past few seasons, and especially Betis is definitely a team that is very enjoyable to watch that actually can go forward. I'm wearing one of those teams that may actually uh, contend for European spots in Athletic Club, uh, who over the past two weeks got two wins, one expected and one very entertaining over the weekend. However, to me, there are three big storylines in Spain. I mean, going back to the last weekend is, of course, um, at, uh, the incident at the Cadiz, where uh, Barcelona led to Tunis and suddenly um, Someone had a hard attack on the Cadiz goalie, uh, running with the fibrillator and throwing it up there and everyone uh, trying to help. And that person literally was, is still alive because he was in a stadium, there was help at hand. So uh, a good story there. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, not too many good stories coming uh, out of Spain. We'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, the second one is, of course, Betis beating Villarreal on the same weekend, uh, kind of putting... Uh, it was a big win for them, not all that they uh, deserve. And then on this weekend, we have, of course, the Derby Madrileño, where the media made it into a real trouble, all, ab all about the dancing of the Real Madrid, especially, Real Madrid player, especially Vinicius Juniors. Uh, so unnecessary. And then the whole uh, Derby, all that we have to talk about are not the brilliant goals that Real Madrid score, but the uh, racist incidents happening from the athletic crowd where the club leadership he has not taken uh, enough care that, you know, certain elements of that fan base are eliminated. And so, yeah, we're again at that point where uh, we have to talk about racist incidents and it just doesn't seem right. However, it also has to be said that the Spanish media need to take a whole uh, responsibility there because they made this into an issue, especially the Coca in, in, in interview, where they pressed him and they said, okay, there's going to be trouble or, or, or whatever. No, don't go for that. But you know, you want to sell your papers and then you get the ugly stuff going. So I find this a rather, rather not so good way. I would say we start in Portugal. Uh, here are the results from the previous weekend where in preparation for the Champions League all of them have, all of the big guys have been winning um, more or less clearly. You have Benfica, you have Sporting, you have uh, Porto, but all had rather easy op op opposition. But we have to also include Braga meanwhile who get a 3-2 win at uh, Rio Ave. It was actually the past uh, weekend that actually threw quite up some uh, surprising results. Porto goes to Storil and only a 1-1. Boavista beats Sporting 2-1. And as a Sporting, it just beats Spurs. And so it is Benfica with a huge win over Maritimo uh, that are now top of the, of the table. And Braga, of course, is also fully in there with a 2-0 over Vizela. And so, yeah, as I said, in the table, Benfica ahead of Braga, Porto and Sporting with already uh, three losses now this season. They, it seems like it will be a tough season for Sporting. Uh, I don't think they may contend for European spots, eventually maybe even get the uh, Champions League, but I don't think they will go much further. At this moment, uh, my eggs will all be in the Benfica basket. They seem to be by far the best team and Roger Schmidt doing an uh, outstanding work there, giving them an identity and given how Porto have uh, gotten beaten in the Champions League by Bruges, I think there's also quite some unrest brewing. So, you know, we see kind of this, we have, we seem to get a new champ, champion in Portugal these um, uh, days every year. Um, we, the expect the same more or less underline what I said. It's now Benfica, Porto and Sporting and Braga more or less level already. 
Braga also enjoying a really, really, really good season. I give you the, here the, the fixtures for the upcoming two weeks. I think I'm coming back. The big one is, of course, Porto against Braga. I think here this could really tell, tell, tell us a lot about Braga. Of course, all the big boys have to play early because they play in the Champions League. Uh, then they are there after Gimares against Befica, potential trap game there. Um, and uh, then, then the weekend after, um, you know, nothing really exciting overall. I think all the top four teams that they've talked about to play against uh, beatable opponents going over to Spain uh, the weekend before Valencia losing to Rayo sticks out uh, Sevilla getting a first win at Espanyol that was uh, very much needed for for, 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 for them uh, and then as I already say Cadiz against Barcelona uh, it was always going to be Barcelona that they had Vincent Valle, although it took quite a while until De Jong found the breakthrough and Lewandowski makes it a second one and then there's the in interruption and then I have, I have to say I think it was in the 80, 80 second when the, um, a fan suffered a heart attack and again uh, was helped and it, the game was quite stopped for a long time now I'm of two minds Barcelona scored then after it restarted two more goals to Ranzo Fati and Usman Dembele okay but honestly you know given what just happened there won't you just play out the game and leave it at 2-0 uh, do you need to go out of, I, I, I did not find this to be the right way going and you know I know I have it out for Barcelona this time time, time, time around, although all said, they're playing really well and are probably fun to watch. But there are certain things that just irk me with the team at the moment. Um, the two Madrid teams, all 4-1 victories, more or less impressive. Um, I think the Real uh, Madrid the goals came rather, rather, rather late, whereas uh, Atletico Madrid had, had already 3-0 lead. Come, come, come in, yeah, uh, the, um, you know, uh, Real Madrid actually were even down at the, uh, before the half and then Valverde gets an equalizer and then uh, Vinicius Jr. and so on. Scored and the later on to make it a proper scoreline. However, the big game that weekend was, of course, Betis 1-0 win over Villarreal. Again, it was really enjoyable to watch. Unfortunately, it was happening as same, the same as other made matches of in, in, in interest to me. What I could gather is, and I heard afterwards, that Villarreal had so many chances that they probably should, should have won on the game. And in the end, it's the uh, Rotary goal and six of first that settles the uh, game for Betis, who were basically hanging on. Now, uh, you, can, can, you can draw two conclusions. Either Villarreal is still unlucky and cannot tap fully in the, into their potential, or... The structure is there. They just need to score their goals. The performance is there. So um, take as you leave it. I think Villarreal probably should take a positive note from that. But uh, we saw that last weekend it also didn't quite work out well for uh, them, at least to their life, like, like, given their stature. Um, going to the past weekend, again, I saw relatively little uh, compared to other leagues. Barcelona easy 3-0 win over Elche and the game was actually done already in the 14th minute when Verdu got sent off and Elche is one of those teams that get relegated. Then again, I don't want to make a big deal out of, out of it, but then it was only a 3-0. Lewandowski 34th, dead by a really nice goal and another one by Lewandowski 448th. Uh, make it 3 0 and then they let it slide It cut it to add two to two more goals. So uh, something doesn't add up. I think here you, if you are the team that goes out here, you really could have gone out and uh, this uh, and uh, boosted your goal difference, which you know eventually may come in handy. Uh, for a Milan fan, Gattuso is of course now the coach at uh, Valencia, and also uh, Edison Cavani is there, which still looks a little bit weird, honestly. Uh, but the what the video is is Samu Calciejo scores the go ahead goal for Valencia. Uh, a, a, a player, yes, he, he had a few uh, good games for Milan, but overall he was also one where you could say, nah, it's just a little bit too much. I, but I'm happy for him. That under Gattuso, he finds uh, a way to play with the squad and accurate score. Then, uh, red card for Carvi uh, definitely sets the game into one uh, direction. Marcos Andre and Almeida make it then a 3 0 scoreline for Valencia, getting uh, back on the board. As I said, I didn't see much, but I heard that Athletic Bilbao and uh, against Rayo, especially first of all, was a highly entertaining game. Um, 
early leads to through Trejo for Rayo, then both Williams brothers and Sunset score, giving them a 3 1 half. Then Lina Falcao later makes it 3 2. Was even a goal um, taken away by VAR for uh, Rayo. Then uh, Valencia, um, no, no, Valencia, Via, Via Real and Sevilla play out a 1 1 draw with um, uh, Via Real coming back. Uh, Baena getting get, get the equalizer, uh, Torres scoring the opener. Would like to say much, but it seems like that against the Seville teams, really Villarreal could have gotten more of it. If, if you tell me one point out of those two or two games, I will say that's a rather disappointment and you don't even see them anywhere here on this wall, which tells you that overall, from uh, given their expectations, this was not what they needed. Uh, and you cannot tell them that European committees are weighing them down. Because in the Conference League, they're playing second string squads left and right. Uh, Real Sociedad also get a win over Espanyol, so they keep up there, but it was all about the Derby Mel, Maat, Rilenio, and I already t- said about the unnecessary preamble about the dancing of Vinicius Junior, which then uh, caused all kinds of um, negative comments and then even racist incidents uh, in uh, at the Wanda. Especially after uh, Rodrigo, ah, uh, no, no, uh, Vinicius Junius tries to do a rainbow flick and then everyone uh, makes monkey chance. It's despicable, absolutely despicable. And in that case, you cannot even say that it was a singular person. However, I want to talk more about the game because uh, Real Madrid did a little bit on Atletico on Atletico by sitting back and hitting them on, on, on the counter because Atletico really started well in the game. But it was then uh, in the 18th minute when uh, I think it was a ball from Rodrigo to Germany who then makes a picture perfect ball. I mean, this was a painting and uh, to Rod- Rodrigo just puts it in the net. An absolute world class goal. Uh, I cannot say it much more, more than that. And then even the second one through Vinicius Jun Jr., who just runs through, he hits the, the post, and then from a relatively easy angle, Valverde puts it in. I think if that was a direct pass to Valverde, this would have been even the better goal. But uh, two brilliant attacks completely take out Atletico Madrid, who then have no way coming back honestly. They find that they, they get a goal back through Hermoso, who doesn't even know that he hit, hit the ball, hit, he, it hits him on the shoulder. But there was not much, and then he gets sent off for two yellow cards in very short succession. Although I have to say the second one was really a uh, ridiculous one. But overall, I think except for the last few minutes, Real Madrid controlled that game rather easily. And yeah, dance on Vinicius. Honestly, uh, for Real Madrid are still the only team this season that have all are still perfect. And even without Benzema, it just it seems it seems like An- 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 Angelot is very much in his happy place uh, there, and that's ac- actually also F- M- Milan M- again Milan fan a good thing to see, and I wish him all the best. It makes me like at the moment with Real Madrid a whole lot more because of Angelot there. So up. On top, it is still the big two, Real Madrid and Barcelona, and I think they're gonna run the run away with it. It's then a, um, a sprint for the next spots. Also, soon is highly up there. We see Betis and Bilbao being in the uh, top for Villarreal and Atletico, kind of hang hang on as do Real Sociedad. Maybe Valencia can also do something there. Um, but when it comes comes to that, Real Madrid very much uh, in there, but also Barcelona. And that's about it. I don't see anyone else coming in. Um, if you look at the positive performances, of course, Real Madrid, um, but uh, also Betis and also Suna should be noted. Sevilla and Elche are really, 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 really uh, bad. Expected standings repeated more or less. What do I would say? I would say up until Sevilla, and I, d- I don't know if Sevilla can hang on. I really would wish that Sevilla get a turnaround, but I can also see that now international break is coming. That you know they might make a new start and get a new coach in um, to be seen. When we come back, we have a, actually a pretty big game for Sevilla against Atletico Madrid. I think that's an interesting one. Barcelona going to Mallorca, Real Madrid at home to Osasuna. Um, I would love to tell you that Celta against Betis is a great game. I just cannot tell at this very, very moment. And also give it a one for the week after because I don't know when I will do the next La Liga video. The week after that one is the is, is, is the classico. So there will be in the next uh, in the three rounds to come. I will, I will make two videos because I will definitely react directly to the classico. 
But in that one, it's again Sevilla having a tough game against Athletic Club. But uh, both of these games uh, are at home, so this makes it also very interesting. Uh, there, Barca against Celta is uh, probably probably a better matchup than Getafe against the Real Madrid. That was it for me from the Iberian Peninsula. As I said. Since I didn't see all that much, I would like you to please drop a comment, comment below if, if uh, you want to add to anything that I said here. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.